as you've heard, we've played uh, so far six songs, and they're probably not the way you've heard them before, <laughs> most of them. We feel that the steel drum in its uniqueness, um, we feel that we could present the music in a slightly different way, make it a little more unique sounding, more in keeping with what the traditions of the steel drums are. And speaking of traditions, let me give you a little bit of the history of the steel drum. <coughs> the steel drums were basically born out of slavery. Um, in the old days, the slaves used drums as a method of communication. And the slave owners, long story short, got hip to the fact that drums were being used as a method of communication. So essentially, they banned drums. So the slaves had to come up with another method of communicating. So they went to, resorted to bamboo. So they would go out, pick the bamboo stems, and they used the bamboo. And for those of you who know bamboo, it has like different sections. So they would tune each section to a different sound, and they'll use that as their method. Well, the slave owners got smart and figured that one out too, and decided no more bamboo. So they banned the bamboo. So the slaves had to come up with something else. So what they found was old pots and pans. And as they played on these old pots and pans, they noticed that as the, the shape of the pan or the pot changed, as they hit on it, the sound would change as well. That's the basis. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit. After World War II, uh, the United States had military bases on the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, which are the two most southern, the southernmost islands of the Caribbean. They're right next to Venezuela, South America. And when they left, they left a ton load of oil drums from all the ships and planes that they would service. And so the natives on the island, remembering their history, decided we can take this stuff and we could probably use the whole pots and pans theory and come up with something else. And they had started kind of experimenting with this before, but now they had it in mass. They had a ton load of them. So they really could make the experimentation. And so they started with this process of hammering and welding and heating, and they came up with what was to be the 20th century's only naturally invented instrument. And in that you have the steel drums. So in fashioning, <coughs> they had to try to figure out how to get essentially an 88 key piano on a steel drum. A little bit tough <laughs> because they don't have the room. There's not a lot of space to fit 88 notes on this thing. I'm going to grab one of these for you. So they were able to come up with, on the best effort, they can get two and a half octaves on one drum. <laughs> Hence the reason for a whole lot of drums. <laughs> <laughs> So they had to split up the notes into different drums so we can get the full complement of 88 keys in a steel drum band. We're a pretty small band. <laughs> and we, what, what we have here, we're able to capture the full 88 notes. And this is an idea, for those of you who haven't seen one, of how they make it happen. So if you notice, uh, if you guys in the back can see a little bit, there's a little bit of a separation going on. That separation is the note. And the technique of getting it separated prevents each note from actually sounding into the other one. So it prevents the note from actually <laughs> jumping over. So when you play that one note, it won't ring in any of the other notes around it. Let me grab a stick so I can do a little demonstration. So if I hit this note, it stays in that note. It doesn't go over to that note. So it's a very, very crazy technique that they've come up with to make this happen. And for the most part, it's still manufactured by hand. They still use <laughs> all oil drums. As a matter of fact, our bass units up in the back, it's hard to get to them, are actually drums that, some other chemical was in that, but it's basically a 55-gallon drum, similar to those that BP had to use to clean up that mess they made down south. But... Um, that's basically what it is. So the smaller drums, and the ones with the short skirts, we call this a skirt, 
they generally play the melody. They're our tenor drums, and they play mostly melody. And as the skirts get longer, the tone changes as well. So the tone gets a little bit darker sounding. They're not as bright. And so they play <coughs> different things. So our front line here are all tenors. And our middle line, we call them the second tenors, or, or the seconds. And they play more rhythmic things. Um, kind of what maybe a guitar would play. <coughs> You know, a funky guitar might play more rhythmic type uh, patterns. They play. Up top, they, those are called the guitar drums, the, the, the shiny chrome ones. Those are called the guitar drums. And similar to the second drums, they also play <coughs> rhythmic things. But they can be actually very multi-dimensional in terms of what they do. Over in this corner, we have what's called a quad cello. And as the name suggests, it tends to play what a cello in an orchestra would play. It'll play lower tones, uh, more sustained notes, things like that. So if you see him doing a lot of rolling and things like that, he's not exercising the arthritis. It's just it's part of what he has to do to play. <laughs> and up in the back, the bass. Now, each one of those bass drums actually have just three notes. So Dawn, our bass player, has to play six of those drums to get her full octave. <laughs> so, um, and some of the notes are doubled. So you would have like a high C and a low C. Um, but not all the notes are double. Just, just a few of the essential ones, you have a high octave and a lower octave. Um, and I play your traditional old regular drum. <laughs> <laughs> that needs no <laughs> <laughs> And that's basically the steel drums in a nutshell. And I'll introduce you to the band members before we go back to playing. And we'll start from this side. Well, actually, she's in the wrong position. <laughs> On the red drum is my daughter, Elise. <laughs> Next to her is my wife, Deanne. <laughs> like it's not really a family thing. <laughs> uh, next to Deanne is Charlene. <laughs> Next to Charlene, we have Tony. Now, i got to give you a little bit of information on Tony. A little bit more than the other guy. Tony is our musical arranger and director. He has <laughs> trained all of our players, the ones who did not know about the steel drums, he taught them how to play. Um, he, all the music you've heard thus far, most of it was arranged by him. I have done a couple. Um, he has played all over the world. Um, he has played for the Queen of England to the mayor of San Francisco. He actually lived in San Francisco, but we figured he wasn't very useful out there, so we'll bring him out this way. <laughs> and so, so we shoveled, shoveled, and shoveled him in, and he's our base here in, in uh, Pennsylvania, in Easton, so that we can have him all the time, 100% of the time. So that's Tony. He's playing, actually, he's a double tenor. So he gets to play two of basically these single ones, so he works a little bit harder. And on the end, we have Robert. Robert also plays a double tenor as well. Robert's a member of our church. Um, and in the back, we have Phyllis, another member of our church. Phyllis plays the double second. And my sister-in-law, okay, it's a family thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jillian, and she also plays the double second. Up top, we have Jocelyn. Jocelyn is, we actually found Jocelyn at a church. <laughs> we were playing at a church, uh, where is it on? <coughs> Lechnersville. And Jocelyn was in the audience. And uh, she was so enamored by the whole concept of the steel drums and what we did, she wanted to come learn how to play. So we told her, come down. We practice on a Friday afternoon. We really don't have like a practice schedule. We just kind of go whenever. But Fridays is usually a good day. And so she came down, and we kept her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Jocelyn. <laughs> In the middle is our tech guru. She also plays a double guitar. That's Valerie. And Valerie gets uh, like our brochures and things together and uh, all that technical stuff. And playing the quad cello, that's my dad, Selwyn. <laughs> and he's the brainchild of, of this whole thing. And in the back, again, on bass is Don. And I am Peter. And that is the steel drum band. <laughs> and you can tell them, you know, how many from, you know, like, 
Jocelyn, she's from Trinidad and Tobago. No, she is not. <laughs> no, she's not. Okay. Is it Anthony who's from Trinidad, right? Exactly. Okay. Now, <laughs> now we, we have a few Caribbean people in here. Me being one of them. My wife is also from Trinidad and Tobago. My sister-in-law, Jillian, is from Trinidad and Tobago as well. Charlene is from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. And Anthony is also from Trinidad and Tobago. Everybody else is a U.S. born. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, go on, take my dad. I forgot. I forgot my dad. <laughs> Big trouble. He is a forgettable kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a mixed bag um, of, of Caribbean people and U.S. native-born folk. But uh, it all just comes together. It comes together. And it was challenging for those of, of the band members who hadn't played the steel drum and, and actually played musical instruments. Uh, most of us have not played musical instruments in our life. Um, Don and I and Val were in the Bellify at church and we played by color code. <laughs> and so now, here we have musicians that are not trained. <laughs> yeah, that's normal. <laughs> I, I, I should get a nicer book. <laughs> right, let, me, let me get a nicer book. This is, this is how we play. <laughs> <laughs> we we play by letters, <laughs> so we act we actually we actually learn where the, the the notes are on the drum, and we play those notes. Now, as you can see, there's no for those of you who read music, there's no rhythmic patterns here or anything to follow in terms of what you play in terms of rhythm. So we've come up with a unique way of actually making that work out for us. How do you think the sharp and the flat? Well, each drum has um, a sharp one and a flat one. Um, well, each of those sections, which is a note, <coughs> and anywhere on that section plays the same sound? Exactly. <coughs> All right, let me get this one and uh, Okay, this, actually, this looks better. Better lay out. I like this. It's a little Q&A session. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually do workshops at schools and things as well. Uh, it does sound better, Sharp. So, yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll get back here. I'll, I'll move around. So, here we have... The C note, and we have the sharps usually are on the right hand side of the drum, and the, the, the white notes are on the left hand side of the drum. Then what's in the bottom there? Where it's not marked? Well, here? Yes. Those are the higher notes to things. So this is the low C. Ah. So they're all C's. Um, so we don't label all of them because they know that this row would be all C's and then this row would be the G and that would be the D. So, should I smile? Yeah, let me bring it over to you folks over here to see. So, here we have our sharp and flats on this side and we have our regular notes on that side. So it's, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. And, and as I said before, to be the only naturally created instrument in all of the 20th century, and now going into the 21st as well, um, mm. where it uses actually material from the earth. Mm. Um, your piano uses wood and your guitar. Um, so there's, you know, to our knowledge, and you can Google this up, you'll probably find it as well. There's no known naturally created <coughs> instrument um, that's new. So it's unique in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In Texas, they say you need a fiddle in the band. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> well, we, we actually we had a member who actually played the sax. He passed away, um, and he would compliment. So it's actually the type of instrument that can be integrated into your your regular type instruments. Um, as a matter of fact. For those of you who may know the group Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. 70s, mm -hmm. they had a couple of recordings where in their band they had a steel drum player as well. Um, and there are a lot of jazz musicians that, that play the steel drum. Um, uh, Andy Norell, if you want to look him up, from uh, California, native Californian, he actually is um, a steel drum player and does a lot of jazz, contemporary jazz music on the steel drum. So um, there are a lot of classical pieces. Um, on the steel drums. As a matter of fact, every year uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, there are two contests, two competitions that take place. One right in the Mardi Gras season, right before Lent, before Ash Wednesday, uh, and that plays a lot of more of the local Caribbean type calypso 
type music. 